when I write music, when I write songs, I, I write it specifically for an artist. And I, I wanted that haunting uh, voice. You know the name, but you don't know the face. And you know the name from working with the likes of Adam Bad. If Bad. If you're on Spotify, if you're in the music industry in South Africa, you know that by Xavier is a producer and a DJ, and he is incredible at what he does. But there is more to this man than just the music. He's on a Zoom with me. Hi, Xavier, welcome. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thanks for having me here. So I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you because I think you're going to teach us a lot about self-reflection and and taking a time out but before we get there talk to me a little bit about you who are you where are you from like what molded you to become this person so i'm originally from from south america from peru um although i've been here for for many many years i've been traveling around the world for since i can remember but i you know i, I consider myself a dj i'm a songwriter i'm a, I'm a writer i'm a published author um and a photographer, of course. I, I do a lot of work in photography. So I, I basically, I follow my passions. I follow what I, what is this that I want to do, what I love in the world. Um, motivated by creativity, motivated by adventure, motivated by experiences. And everything that I want to do, I want to do with excellence. I want to do with love. I want to do with passion. And uh, yeah, busy, at the moment, I'm uh, in South Africa. And uh, yeah, I'm focusing a lot on my music career, on my DJ career, uh, as well as my photography. Okay, so you've worked with Armanchi Bad, and yes. he. I love. I adore him. I adore him. Me and too. If I don't, Who doesn't? <laughs> if I don't say that enough, <laughs> he's going to come for me. But um, talk to me about how did you meet him? How was that experience? And 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 how how did that all come about? You know, uh, we've known each other so long by social media. We got a lot of common friends, and. Um, and I've DJ in many places where he's performed and, and we hang around, you know. And I, I, I just, I love his voice. He's such a unique voice. Yeah. And when I write music, when I write songs, I, I write it specifically for an artist. And I, I wanted that haunting uh, voice that sounded, uh, I mean, I, I've, I mean, I've, I've even got like, my, my spirit animal is a wolf. <laughs> resonated with the animal. I've even got tattooed in my on my arms and everything. And when I when I heard his voice, I could hear how he could get that that, that almost wolf-like uh, howl quality to to his voice. So I wrote a song specifically uh, for him in mind. I contacted him via social media and say, you know, hi, I'm Xavier, and I love to work with you. Uh, and he was so so keen. He he liked my work before. And we got together, uh, we played the guitar, we wrote it together. I, I make sure that it was perfect for his voice. And obviously, uh, Hand Like a Wolf came about. It is one of my favorites. And I've got to tell you, that haunting howl that he does in the song, it is yes. so beautiful and eerie. It is exactly my, I mean, it's my aesthetic. It's beautiful and eerie. Um, yeah. So it's one of my <laughs> favorite, favorite songs. I was actually listening to it this morning while I was prepping for this interview. But I want to talk to you about music. Was it always mm. something that you wanted to venture into? Was it in your family? How did it, what sparked it in you? I, I think it's genetic. I mean, I come from a family of artists down in Peru. Uh, my grandmother was a guitarist. My, my uncle's probably the most famous uh, TV presenter in my country. Um, you know, I come from a family where art is, is, I've got painters in my family, I've got theater. Uh, so it's just there. Um, and I guess, I mean, I didn't choose music. I think music chose me in a way because I've been, I've been listening and hearing songs in my head since I was a little kid. And, and it's almost like I, I don't even have to sit down and write and plan a song. Uh, songs come to me. I could be walking, I could be cooking, I could be in the shower. And I just hear music in my head and I have to stop what I'm doing at a time. And I run for the phone and I put my microphone on and I, and I record whatever I get at the time. So it's almost like a stream of consciousness that kind of flows through me, that chooses me for some reason. So it's it's something that for me, I didn't personally uh, want it. Uh, it just, it, it chose me and I just followed uh, the call in a way, yeah. That's really beautiful. I think that it, it, it does, it does travel down. I think even if your immediate ancestors weren't musical, 
what some of them had to have been and you know we forget that we walk this road with our ancestors and they're always there so there has to be some part of it within you that comes from them right the music and you just the... have to connect to that creativity to that muse to that to that to that um that part of us that perhaps we silenced right yeah and um you just have to i mean i open myself to that to that energy it's just energy really um so i've been doing it since i can remember it's the most natural thing for me i don't have to think about it it comes it comes now it's to, to me as natural as breathing mm -hmm. so um whenever I, I i'm i'm getting um i'm into a melodic um, i'm doing a melodic house project as well apart from the bizeta project and so when i connect into that energy i receive those kind of songs so uh, after the interview i'll sit down and i I'll, I'll start writing for the next hour so it is, I, although it's, it's an artistic feeling, I also schedule, schedule it into my life because I am so busy. And, and I think if we don't kind of focus and put energy into those qualities, they'll disappear. So you have to also work on that, on your talent and on your gift. No, for sure. And okay, so talking about working on your talents and your gift, you're currently doing like a writer's retreat at the moment. So tell yes. me about this. How does this work? Because I've heard of these things, but I've never met anyone that's actually currently on one. So what, what do you do? Like what happens? So I, I used to teach songwriting. I studied songwriting in New York. I, I, I lived there for a while and I, and I worked with the most unbelievable songwriters that uh, had top 10 and number one hits in, in, in the States. And so what they taught me was to, to sit, always set aside time for your writing and for being creative. You know, they said to me, the art of the writing is in the rewriting. And the art of writing happens with discipline. So if you don't sit down, you've got, you, if you wait for that moment to happen, it is not going to happen. You have to look for that moment. It's like the holy grail that you're looking for. You have to set the time to look for the little holy grail. So I'm just taking a couple of days off. I've always wanted to do a short film. Being a photographer and being a film, I, more like a, a, a filmmaker, I, I wanted to always, there's so many stories out there, uh, Danny, that I, just happened now that we're going through now as a nation and as people and as a community that I want to tell because through tough times, like what happened three weeks ago, there's always things of beauty that happens and need to be told. So I'm now putting that energy again by putting two days aside to get those stories to come to me and to write those stories so I can, I can, my work has always has to change people's lives. I think if our work doesn't change people's lives in some way, for me, it's at least for me, I'm not judging other people, but for me, it's not, you know, it's not important. Um, so I want to tell stories that of beauty, of hope, of redemption that happened a couple of weeks ago so that we can share those for posterity. So that's why I'm taking those couple of days off. For people that are creative, uh, writers, artists, musos, whatever your creativeness is, it could be baking, right? Who yes. don't have the opportunity to take a couple of days and go on a retreat to go and, and allow the downtime. How would you suggest that they bring that into their daily practices? What, what would your suggestion be for them? Um, always be practical. So listen, uh, if you can wake up an hour earlier in the morning, Problem solved, right? The case okay. goes hours early because your brain, your, 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 your waves in your brain are so, so sharp in the morning. Um, I, used to, I used to be a monk. I was a monk for six months. Wow. And, um, and I was trained um, that we used to wake up at three in the morning every day to chant. So at three in the morning, between three and six in the morning, your brain is so awake. So if you wake up an hour early, if you really, so the thing is, if you have enough passion that you want to do something, Waking up an hour early means nothing, right? Yeah. So you all you can always set aside some time, uh, use your weekends perhaps, um, watch less YouTube or Netflix, and do and do and work on your career, work on your gift. It's always it's, it's always a solution if you if it's important to you, you'll make the time. I feel like I feel personally attacked by that statement, Xavier, but it's fine. <laughs> I'll let you off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it is valid. You know, um, I've been told yeah. over the last couple of weeks by many, many people that we all need yeah. analog time. And there has to be a space where I don't have a phone or a laptop or a screen around or near or in front of me. Because, How's that going? Mm, well, I mean, Tough, eh? you really, you really want to know the truth? Not very well. <laughs> you know what it is? I think, I think we're, yeah. it's, 
we're so conditioned to not be alone and not be bored. I don't think it's so much that I'm addicted to a screen. I think that I don't know how to be bored, right? And boredom is where creativity is birthed because because your your mind is inactive it starts to come up with all of the things and and i look at yeah. all of the half projects that lie around this 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 mini studio of mine and i think you know if i had the ability to be bored to stand in a line and not reach for my phone or to just cook without youtube in the background or to just drive without a radio or a podcast or to just be alone in my garden not listening to Joe Rogan or Andy Frisella or whoever, I think I would be better for it. But we've reached a point, I think, in, in, in 2021 where we're almost afraid to be alone. We're afraid to be with our thoughts. And we really need to work on that. So that's where I am. I've, I've, I've seen the problem. I know what the problem is. I don't know how we're going to fix yep. it, but I mean, we'll, we'll get there, you know? We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I love being alone. It's, it's, um, it's my favorite time, but also I'm actually a complete extrovert and a complete introvert. Um, so I guess not everybody's like that, but my alone time is, it's, it's where I recharge, you know, it's where I get my, I, I can't create if I'm not surrounded with people. It, it will be impossible. It, yeah. It's almost non pure. If, if that makes any sense. Um, so I think the alone time, if you I'm sticking to creatives at the moment is, is where you're going to get a lot of your, your ideas. So if you can just schedule that as, as well, I know we're just so busy. We're so busy and we're so inundated with information and with entertainment. Oh my goodness. You open your YouTube and you'll, in, you, within, you look at your watch and it's an hour gone oh. of your time. So, and it, you know, it's, it's, so it depends. Yeah, I guess it depends where your values lie and, uh, and uh, what you want to do with, it, with your life. It's all hard work, really. <laughs> oh, and we've circled straight back to my favorite word, discipline, of which I have absolutely none. So, I mean, that's another thing we're working on in 2021. <laughs> discipline, um, analog time, there's all of these things. Okay, so what are you working on? Because you're obviously still creating. Um, in the pandemic, you haven't been able to to DJ or, or meet your fans or, or interact with humans. So I'm assuming from what I gathered you've been hard at work creating what have you yes. created so um i'm busy writing my new ep so i've put two projects two musical projects uh the by xavier which is now playing of course in jacaranda is a more pop and radio friendly and then i've got a melodic house project so i don't know if you like um artists like ben bomer and lane eight and all of that stuff so i love to do melodic house that it's very uplifting and very very uh motivating so i'm busy with that at the moment so um yeah computer there little keyboard <laughs> over there i'll sit down have a chai latte and start writing music a little bit later and um, so i'm busy with that um come out in the next four to five months so okay. um busy with that uh again my short film of course and um i'm also a a breathing coach so i'm busy putting together a little breathing thing to show people how to keep the lungs strong after they had COVID because a lot of people are recovering from COVID and I just want to keep a little bit of, of that help just to make them uh, get the lung capacity to be back again and to feel as normal as, as, as they can. So I'm busy working on that at the moment as well. Xavier, I feel like your life is very together. I feel like you have no problems, no stress, no like you're you were a monk, you do breath work, you probably shower in cold water, you probably eat really well, you're I do. You're you see, you see? I I know you, right? Guru, like you are going to lead us into the light. Tell me something. You are human who who has emotions and anxieties and things, right? <laughs> Of course, of course. Okay. I, I've got lots of problems too, you know, but uh, I try not to focus on that. Okay, okay. Well, I just wanted to know that you are like one of us and you're not like ascended. Oh. <laughs> I worry, you know. <laughs> not when... even close. Okay, good. Good. Um, tell me come, party with me, come party with me one night and we'll just see that. <laughs> definitely not ascended. Xavier, I'm from Brackpan. <laughs> Do not invite a girl from Brackpan to come and party because I don't know how well you'll survive. Danny, have you ever partied with a Peruvian? That even rolls off the tongue. Oh, no, but I have heard some things <laughs> about, about Peruvian. They are probably true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm coming. As soon as we're allowed out when I'm 65, I'm coming. I'm coming. 
Um, and I'll do my breath work so that I'll be good to go, right? So we can party. But listen, I wanted to uh, talk to you. Um, being a monk and, and, and having these daily practices of, of the breath work and the cold water exposure and all of the things that you're doing, this discipline, how do you think it's impacted the, the, the creative side of your life? Because it's two very conflicting, the discipline and create, creativeness, creativity are two very conflicting sides to anyone. How do they mesh? Well, you don't have to be an absolute crazy madman to be, to be creative. I'm, I mean, most, and many, sorry, many of the most creative minds in the world are absolutely crazy people, amazingly geniuses. But, you know, you've got to work with what you have been given. So not everybody can be a Dali, not everybody can be a Picasso, mm. right? But it doesn't mean not because you're, a, you're not a Dali, you don't have to follow what you do, right? Mm. You don't have to be the best singer in the world to sing. You just have to just do what you love, right? So for me, it's that. For me, um, I mean, I cannot fathom how to live without the breathing work that I do. You know, I, I don't, I, if, you know what it does? It's almost like a drug. It releases DMT in your brain. So those things that make you feel really good, those endorphins, I live like that on a daily basis. It's like you're living on a high for free. You actually get high on your own supply, basically, <laughs> of oxygen. So I cannot, your brain just works on another level. You're so productive. You're so focused. You, you, you become more kind as a, as a human being. You, it's just the effects are incredible. It changes your life forever when you start breathing. Okay. I'm looking forward to this project. I think we all need we all need a little bit of getting high on our own supplies and DMT would be good. <laughs> Around the world, we all need some endorphins. Okay, Xavier, where do we find you? Where do we follow you? How do we keep up with you? Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm quite a busy on Instagram. So you can just type by Xavier. Um, and Xavier spell X-A-V-I-E-R. And same with Facebook. I'm not super, super busy on social media, but you'll find my music there. And if you just type by Xavier um, on Spotify and music, you can, you'll definitely find me. Stunning. I'm very excited for the short film. I'm very excited for all of the projects that you're going to be giving us um, and, and giving, gifting the world. And thank you for hanging out with me today. I will thank you so much for having me. And let me see what I can do with vacation for you as well. <laughs> yeah. Jacaranda FM.